friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited about today's video. I'm going to be doing another spoiler vlog for you guys. This time I'm going to be buddy reading with Allie, with Marcy, with Deja, and I think that's it. Um, Leilani had to drop out, but McKay is going to be keeping a close eye on all of our thoughts because he really wants to know what we think and he knows our reservations of going in. All of us are pretty terrified. I think that Deja was the only one that was like, let's do this. But everybody else was a little sketchy. Like Allie is a self proclaimed scaredy cat. Marcy has been warded off by all of her horror readers that she would not like this book and it would be too crazy because of like the animal scenes and stuff. And I have been back and forth on the fence, off the fence, on the fence, off the fence with this book because of different things that I've been hearing. Look, we're going to be reading the troop guys i'm so excited i have some tabs up here to mark where we're going to read every single day so we're going to do it over a course of several days just to like give us time to process all the drama all right guys so i'm here to give you like my first update um on this and i'm not that far into it i am only where am I where's my bookmark I'm only 42 pages in but I just wanted to share some things with you so so far am I scared no not really but there's definitely like things to come that could get scary and we're gonna stay tuned to see if I get scared newspaper articles right here so it says the hungry man of Prince County and it talks about how like this guy came into this diner and ordered like all of these like huge breakfasts and ate all of them and then when he was done he started like eating the napkins and stuff like that um, ripping them out of the dispenser chewing and swallowing them and then he stole someone that works there's vehicle. Um, and then she said, I think it was the waitress or whoever was being interviewed said, I could hear something coming from inside him. I'm saying under his skin. I know that sounds silly. So I'm wondering like, is it like tapeworms? But from the synopsis, bioengineered, so I'm not sure yet, but there's a quick theory for you. Um, then it goes into chapter one and it talks about how he basically uh, drove her vehicle to this place. Now he's on a boat. This part was pretty gross on chapter one on page, I don't know, what page is this? Page five, it says his guts were right now leaking through the split tissue into the crevices beneath, between his organs. He yearned for that raccoon. If it were here now, he'd rip the hardened rags of sinew off its tattered fur. He'd crush its skull and sift through the splinters for its brain, which would be as delicious as the nut meat of a walnut. That's pretty gross. But at the same time, like, even though animal scenes do bother me, like, that didn't particularly bother me. And there's been other little minor scenes, like... I don't know. I don't know my distinction between like when an animal scene bothers me and like when it doesn't. But like this random dead raccoon like roadkill that didn't really bother me. Um, so I'm wondering if it's more like that type of animal stuff or if it's like if it's going to be like someone's cat like that will bother me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so let's continue. I do have a couple of other things um, underlined. Oh, so then after that, it has another newspaper article. And then um, it goes into chapter two and it talks about the scoutmaster, Tim Riggs. And it briefly introduces us to the boys, like Tim is telling us about the boys. And then um, it says for two days, he and the boys would be alone. One cabin, a few trails, a boat dropped them off with their supplies earlier this evening and it would return on Sunday morning. And um, we already know that the hungry man is headed to this, um, I guess, isolated place. <laughs> Hello 
Hello friends, I'm here with a reading update on The Troop by Nick Cutter. I'm reading this with a whole bunch of my friends. Um, I'm currently on page 99, so um, I did actually read a, like a tiny, tiny bit past. I read like one more chapter than like I was supposed to for day one, but Oh well. So I read one chapter past that. Um, and a couple of like brief thoughts that I have is I don't like how Newton is talked about in this book. Like he's the nerdier one of the boys and the comments that they make towards his weight is annoying. Um, and just anytime there's like a fat character or like fat mentioned it's just done in such like a negative way and like I get it this isn't the book to like talk about representation for plus size people fat people um but at the same time it's just like it doesn't have to be in there because it's such like just a stereotype almost that fat people are lazy and disgusting and you know not healthy and stuff like that so um that's I'm just going to point it out because it's in there and it's bothering me because <clears throat> there's been little instances of it like sprinkled throughout and I just finally got fed up with it I was like okay I'm kind of over that um that being said, the prediction that I made in the beginning part, um, they actually mention tapeworms in here because, so the boys do their little hike, they come back from the hike, and um, Tim has closed off the hungry man. And he acts, actually asks one of the boys, Max, to help him have like a surgery on the guy and the reason why he asks Max is because like I guess his dad is the corner like the town's corner and um he also does taxidermy so he's like Max you've been around this stuff like you can help out right and there's this whole like inner dialogue like should I actually be asking this young boy to help me with this like massive thing or like what but Yes, so they close the other boys off, they block them out, they say don't come in no matter what, and Max and Tim, the scoutmaster, go into the room with the hungry man and they're going to cut open his stomach. And Max talks about how like the guy looks even worse than he did before and he's noticing signs on Tim like he's lost weight, he's, he's turning into whatever this person is. Um, so yeah, um, they operate on the guy, they cut open his stomach, and I guess there is this like worm-like, tube-like thing living inside of him. Um, and that whole discussion was just kind of boring. Maybe I just can't picture this in my head. I don't know. I don't think that this would be scary. So that's kind of where we're at right now. They have got this worm has come out it after it got out it went around the guy's neck and like choked and killed him uh, that that that's really it that's all that's happened so this guy's died um and tim seems to be losing massive amounts of weight and he his inner dialogue is telling him that he's really hungry so you're thinking whatever happened to this guy is going to happen to tim and possibly even max now I don't know so uh, I'm kind of bored to be completely honest but that's an update I'm gonna read um, day two's um, section today and I'll let you know what I think hi friends I thought I would offer a reading update for the troop I am on page 115 I just finished the first part um, it's 2.15 in the afternoon on the second day and I just have not I didn't have anything going on today like literally absolutely nothing and I've been wasting time doing other things instead of reading this which is like a really easy way to tell if I'm engrossed in a book or not 
and that just tells me that I'm not really having a good time reading this. I'm not really looking forward to like jumping back in, but I forced myself to finally start reading some and now I am like starting part two um, or I'm at the part two, you know, part and I still have like quite a bit to read for today and I should be able to do it. I'm just so bored. day number three I am supposed to be moving on to like the third section but I didn't actually finish my section yesterday I had just a couple pages to go but I was so 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 tired that I didn't get to finish but I do have a lot of thoughts so we're gonna dive into those right now okay for starters I will say that I haven't been like terrified or scared or wigged out or anything like that even though there are like nasty worm things like talked about and stuff like that like that's not really bothering me and even like this big worm being in you and like I don't know it's not wigging me out even the descriptions of like the dog that had the worm in them like that's not really disgusting me but um I did get to this part that was really sad it was this part right here um, and it's basically like the testing stages like animal testing um, for this drug so they injected this chimpanzee that was um, how old was it oh yeah it was a chimpanzee it was a female it was three years old seven three years seven months and a hundred and five pounds so they inject the um, chimpanzee and then it just goes through just like with the other one where it tells like a time frame of exactly what's happening um all throughout and it even goes onto this page and this page so that was really sad because I hate animal testing and I know in my everyday life that like I use stuff and I probably eat stuff that has been tested on animals and I really need to do a better job of making sure I'm not doing that because the idea that animals are ripped out of their homes and put in cages to test things and like with COVID going on, I know there is a bunch of animal testing going on right now. Um, and chimpanzees is one of the big things that we're using to test different injections on them. Um, so like, I understand it's like part of me understands the need to do that but then like part of me and I think a larger part of me absolutely hates it because like they didn't ask for this and they can't vocally explain their distress and discomfort and all of the things that go along with these tests and being stripped away from their family and then you read about this and the chimpanzee was obviously distressed like it was doing horrible things to itself like ripping out its own fur and eating its own fur it gets very graphic um so that did kind of make me after I read that I did have to like put the book down for a while um just because like that type of stuff it's not that it's scary um it's just so sad to read about um yeah so then when I like a little bit later um like I think before bed I started reading a little bit more and I got to the second part I wanted to talk to you about which was um the testimony of Nathan Erickson bef given before the federal investigatory board so basically they're talking again about 
why this thing was invented and what the purpose was and how it was made and all of this. And basically it's, it was to be a pill. That's the grail, right? A pill you can pop before bed, a little white pill. That was the idea. So basically they made this sweet little pill that people could pop, but in the pill, even though it tasted sweet, it um, had freeze dried eggs of this worm, this larva, you know, of this worm. And um, they were freeze dried like sea monkeys could use to buy in those back pages of old G.I. Joe, Joe comics. Um, and then, and they're talking about like the tapeworm diet that like in other countries, not the US, um, cause in the North America it's illegal, but um, yeah, a beef tapeworm is a great diet aid if it stays in your gut. Problem is tapeworms are wanderers and they talk about, you know, that a little bit, but basically they thought, take this little pill, these eggs will hatch into your system, and then you will take another injection to flush all of the larva worms out, and you'll be skinny. Um, and that's not the case, because things did not go as planned, and the worms are growing to this like massive size that they're not just staying in the gut they're going into all of these other parts where they shouldn't be going and it's killing people and animals and it's making them like ferociously hungry where they will eat any food they see in sight the chimpanzee was eating its own fecal matter it was pulling off hunks of its own fur and eating it and its own flesh and like I would just eat this and I'd start eating the book and I'd eat this like so it just makes you like constantly feed because it needs to feed but it's like killing you in the process you know um so yeah I don't like that <laughs> this is all based on losing weight and um I don't like the the animal testing parts um outside of that like nothing is really scary i can already assume what's going to happen so the scoutmaster has it um i think a couple of the boys in the troop have it um shelly kind of likes to um hurt animals or bugs i will say not animals but bugs insects whatever um he was talking about like popping i think it was like crawdads that he was talking about i don't remember but how he had he would like pop their eyes to listen to the sound and uh, I don't know it was just I think things were put in here for like shock value I don't know like I'm just not liking this basically so guys I know I'm sitting in the same spot but it's been a crazy morning with my dog. She's had surgery after surgery and something else happened this morning and it was just really stressful. So I'm keeping a very close eye on her, but I think I'm finally to a point that I can actually sit down and actually start reading a little bit. Um, dishes are in the dishwasher, laundry is folded and put away. I do need to move my husband's blanket to the dryer, but I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna eat a piece of gum, then I'm gonna read. Hey guys, I'm here to offer you an update on the troop. I've been reading it off and on today. I'm currently on chapter 30, so I'm more than halfway through reading this book. And I will say like, overall, the plot is kind of boring. So the basic storyline is the boys, okay, so he invites the hungry man in, and he realizes that he's sick. So he sends the boys away to do like a little scout mission, like a like a hiking thing. And while he's gone, he's gonna like look at this guy and see if he can figure out what's wrong. When the, when the boys get back later on that night, they realize that, okay, something is seriously wrong. The scout master is not 100% himself. The scout master tasks Max to help him operate on the hungry man. During that, they Max notices that the Scoutmaster is infected. And 
they decide after that the hungry man dies they realize it's like this big worm thing they shut the scout master in the closet like a coat closet or something like that but then because of like a series of an events other some of the boys are infected as well because we're learning in these other chapters not really chapters but these other little parts that are thrown in like through interviews and little transcripts stuff like this like interviews and stuff like that that it was created as a way to lose weight they are trying to create this magic diet pill um, and then things didn't go as planned so now you have this super rampant worm-like tapeworm creature-esque thing that basically is out of control learned that um the island has been put on quarantine and um that nobody's coming to save these boys so they're basically just their scoutmaster has died a tree crashed through crushed a skull whatever and some of these boys are infected and one of the boys is a complete psychopath and that's shelly so the main storyline of that of like what's actually happening behind the scenes is really kind of boring like nothing is really exciting nothing is really scary this worm thing is just kind of gross but like it's not that bad um but the scary part to me is shelly shelly is a twisted sob that um in the very beginning part he talked about like the crayfish and like popping the crayfish's eyes and pulling the legs or something like that basically like torturing animals he was crouched by the shore stirring the water with a stick he pushed the tip of it against the fat body of a sea slug he exerted slow pressure until the slug's body burst like a snot filled bath bead so this person Shelly is torturing animals and if only think he's like a psychopath it's like ding 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 this is like a total psychopath then so there was that chimpanzee part that I talked to you guys about like the testing on chimpanzees and how that bothered me and like why I feel the way I do about that and you can totally disagree or agree but then I get to chapter 27 and I don't know if you've seen that Netflix mini series it's called um like don't fuck with cats yeah it's gonna be like someone's cat like that will bother me <laughs> so chapter 27 was basically about shelly killing the family's pet cat and it goes into detail of like what he did but it also talked about like the build up to the cat and it's just really not okay oh yeah so he talks about newton who is the fat kid in the group he was intrigued by newton's belly and back flap it spilled over the waist of his pants like soft serve ice cream over the edge of a cone he wondered how it would look if the fat boy got worms he imagined the buttery folds of skin lapping up on themselves like those ugly looking dogs what were they called sharpays newton would have a sharpay body inside all those yards of empty skin his bones would be left to rattle around like pennies in a jar boy that would be something to see um a little couple paragraphs down it says the last time shelly could recall feeling this level of elation was the afternoon he killed trixie the kitten his mother adopted after finding her under the porch i don't know it's just it's a lot guys all right i'm kind of terrified because I told you guys that I'm buddy reading this with Allie, Marcy, and Deja. And McKay is also in the group. And he's already read the book. Um, but he's just in there to hear our thoughts and all of that. And he warned us about a sea turtle scene. Okay, I got another iced coffee. So good. Um, anyway... I am terrified because McKay warned us about a sea turtle scene and I'm coming up on it. I think it's going to start on page 219 
Um, Newton squinted into a tide pool. Something popped up on its placid surface. Whatever it was, it had the coloring of an exotic bird's egg. It vanished again. Max, come over here. They peered down. Their breath was trapped expectantly in their lungs. There, whatever it was, popped up again. Bubbles burst all around it. It was gone. It's a sea turtle. So, I think they're going to eat a sea turtle which is fine because they need food and even though turtles like sea turtles are my favorite animal um you have to eat to survive and these are meat eaters so i understand but i think it's gonna do something else if it's just them eating a turtle like that doesn't gross me out hi friends i am here to finish up the troop by nick cutter I am currently on page 336. I almost finished it last night, but I was just exhausted. I had some unexpected news happen. I have a couple of messages from people that I'm buddy reading with to listen to, but I want to finish reading and um, finish like telling you my final thoughts. So I'm not influenced by what I listen to from my friends telling me what they thought. And then I will wrap up this vlog. Let's do the thing. I finished it. I didn't really like the ending. Um, I was expecting to be a lot more grossed out, a lot more disgusted than I actually was. There were definitely those scenes that I was like, ew, that's gross, but not like, oh my gosh, that's gross. Nothing like that. Um, there were the two scenes that I wish they didn't have. The first one being the testing on the chimpanzee. Um, I don't think that that was needed. <laughs> um, and also the cat torture scene, killing of the cat, the kitten, the cat, Shelly. What an asshole. Um, but I will say that I guess, you know, it's horror. Um, horror readers have said, yes, this is horror. Um, and I think, like I said, have said a couple times now, I think I just misunderstood the genre. Um, I was thinking it was more like horror movies. Um, and I don't know what about horror movies scares me, but horror books doesn't. Maybe I'm not picturing it good enough in my head. There's not really much more for me to say. Um, I thought it was okay. I thought that the author was good with the description. I think that the characters were, I don't want to say fleshed out well, because that's like thinking about it in conjunction with what happened in the story. Um, but I think the main storyline of the people getting the worms and it being the doctor that was trying to create this diet pill, that part was boring and I didn't like it. What I did like about the story was the characters and the friends and the scout group, like the four boys and how they never gave up on each other and how it wasn't until like, it was almost too late that they would ditch somebody. Um, and just how they, it was almost like a Lord of the Flies feel. It was like, they just stuck together. I mean, I am glad I read it because like, if I can do this, I feel like I can do anything. But the part that interested me was the mystery of what was going on. And since they revealed it so early on in the story of like what was actually happening, like it was the worms, it was this diet pill and all of that, I felt like it didn't have enough suspense to it. And I felt like I knew everything. So it was really the thing that disgusted me the most and that was the most horrifying was Shelly being an animal torturer and being a psychopath. But Shelly dies, so all is okay. Um, one of the boys ends up making it out, uh, Max. He makes it out and um, all the other boys die. The Scoutmaster dies, obviously the Hungry Man dies. Uh, Max makes it out, but they have to like quarantine him like in this military facility and just like make sure and stuff like that. And at the very end, I'm not quite 100% sure what happens because he goes back to the island or he's on his way back to the island and he's like, oh, the pool, the water smells like a chlorine pool. Everything's burned down on the island. But then he kind of mentions something about being hungry or something like that or there being an emptiness inside him. So I'm like, so is he actually infected? So anyway, I'm going to rate this story three out of five stars. Um, like I said, I definitely think there were gruesome bits. I think there were interesting bits, but overall I was just kind of bored and I didn't really like any of the characters. Um, and I also don't like that 
how they would talk about Newton being fat and stuff like that. Um, although that I get it because like the diet pill and the what the worms were doing and all of that. But I digress. That's it. Final thoughts. Um, yeah, would I recommend it? Not really. I don't know. I definitely need to read more horror. So I'll keep you guys in the loop. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.